Nelson Mandela arrives in America, a ready-made hero with a strong message. South Africa shall be free. This is NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Reporting tonight from NBC News headquarters in New York. Good evening. Nelson Mandela was honored by New York City today in a way usually reserved for presidents, astronauts, and hometown World Series champs. He came here to continue his campaign against apartheid, and President Bush said today that U.S. sanctions would stay on until certain additional steps are taken. But for the most part, this was a day to celebrate Mandela. The man who spent 27 years in prison was given a hero's welcome. Governor Mario Cuomo calling him a symbol of the indestructibility of the human spirit. The 71-year-old Mandela seemed tired, not quite ready for it all. Jesse Jackson gave him a hand with his tie. Mandela urged the United States to maintain its tough policy against South Africa as blacks there struggle for equality. And the only way in which we can work together on this difficult road is for you to ensure that sanctions are applied. Mandela and his wife Winnie stopped by a Brooklyn high school. They were greeted by 10,000 people. Then New York City honored Mandela as no other city can. A ticker tape parade up Broadway. Mandela said he knew he had friends in New York, but never dreamed he was so loved. The key to the city from Mayor David Dinkins. Mandela then talked of unlocking the shackles of apartheid. We want our new South Africa to be a country which vanishes forever. Racism in all its forms. South Africa shall be free. This struggle continues. A luta continua. Thank you. I am one of the countless millions who drew inspiration from Nelson Mandela's life. My very first political action, the first thing I ever did that involved an issue or a policy or politics was a protest against apartheid. I would study his words and his writings. The day he was released from prison gave me a sense of what human beings can do when they're guided by their hopes and not by their fears. And like so many around the globe, I cannot fully imagine my own life without the example that Nelson Mandela set. And so long uh, as I live, I will do what I can to learn from him. Us now is Dan Rather, a man who has interviewed Nelson Mandela numerous times over the years, covered his life and times intensively. Dan is now the anchor of the special series, The Big Interview on Access TV. Of course, he's also the former anchor of the CBS Evening News. Mr. Rather, it's great to have you here. Great to be back with you, Rachel. I wanted to play that footage, that contemporaneous footage of him arriving in the United States after being freed. I didn't want to show you because I didn't want you to feel like you were up against your younger self at the time. <laughs> but, I appreciate that. <laughs> I do feel like I'm setting you back up against Brokaw in a well, way. Well, my friend Tom Boker did a great job that day. Yeah. Did a great job. Well, I have to ask you just having met him a number of times, having interviewed him a number of times, just your overall reaction to his passing, to his having lived to be 95 and to what he came to mean to the world before he died. Well, Nelson Mandela was and remains in a straight historical line that runs from Mahatma Gandhi through the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Mm -hmm. to the Mandela era, if you will, a towering figure in the last half of the 20th century and through the first decades of the 21st century, a towering figure because of his character and his determination to change the balance of power, if you will, in terms of racial justice. When you uh, interviewed him after his release from prison in 1990, what do you remember about um, what, do you, what do you remember about that personal encounter with him? I mean, I'm, I'm struck by 
what Governor Mario Cuomo said at the time, the indestructibility of the human spirit. I mean, he was not a world famous man when he went to prison. No. He became famous in prison, spending 18 years on Robben Island, another nine years in prison after that, never broken, always expected to be able to take up the leadership mantle after all that time and prove worthy of it. It was something about his human resilience which made him super heroic. Well, resilience is a word that will always be associated with Nelson Mandela. That and determination and also forgiveness. Uh, the, through a colleague and friend, uh, I was with Nelson Mandela in his home when he first, the night he first came back to his, his home. And I was struck by how calm his demeanor was, how often he spoke of forgiveness. If there was any sense of revenge or payback in the man, it was not apparent. I don't think there was any. Now, he was the first to say, and he said that night, and he said continually afterward, he was an imperfect person, an imperfect leader. He'd engaged in violence, which he later regretted. He made his mistakes. But he was all about forgiveness. My most vivid memory of him that night was his absolute determination for reconciliation in his country and a sense of forgiveness. Now, a few days later, I had a one-on-one -on -one on camera television interview with him, and he expanded on that. He talked eloquently about the desire for South Africa to move forward in the future. He had no illusions. It was gonna take a lot to reconcile the country, but of course he accomplished that before his death. You covered his election for the presidency after he was released from prison, running against the man who released him from jail. Right. Um, was it obvious back to you, to you back then that Nelson Mandela was going to win that election? Was, it clear, was, the, was the future of South Africa clearly written? No. That, first of all, it was not assured that Mandela would be elected. I thought he probably would be, but it was by no means certain. It, 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 beyond that, there was no certainty that he would be able to reunite, to reconcile the country, which, of course, after he won the election, he took, uh, made great sides toward doing. But I do want to say that the remarkable thing about Nelson Mandela, he never claimed to be a saint. He wasn't. What made him an, uh, the larger-than-life hero was his vulnerabilities, his weaknesses, uh, the fact that he had done things that he wished he had not done. And that made him all the more human, and I think in that a larger hero. But let's have no mistake uh, that there was, there is, no greater leader in the last half of the 20th century, the first of the 21st century, than Nelson Mandela. Dan Rather, thank you very much for your time tonight, sir. It thank you for having me, Rachel. Thank it's you. always Particularly a pleasure. Tonight. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back.